What is post-processing when it comes to astrophotography? If your answer is now working with pics inside, noise reduction, stretching and so on, I would argue you're wrong. Why this is the case? What post-processing from my perspective really is? How you do it? All after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. Okay, let's think it through. We all agree what pre-processing is. It's the stacking, right? Now pre means before processing. So if post-processing is working with pics inside and the name post implies after processing, then the question is, what is the processing? You see the issue? So then you could argue, okay, so what you do in pics inside is the processing. And here I would agree. But then what's the post-processing? Is there even a post-processing? And my answer is yes. And let's go for a moment away from astrophotography to your Android or iPhone. And I think about it. So you press the shutter button and what happens first is that actually the camera has to put all the optical signals that came into the sensor into a picture, debayer it, and what actually comes out is the raw file and that's the pre-processing, right? Now after that in modern cell phones the phone then takes billion of operations of optimizing these pictures by recognizing certain areas, applying HDR and so on. And at the end, there's a finished picture on your screen. And that's the processing that your phone actually does for you. Now, but we all know how we are. It looks nice. It's probably a very accurate depiction but sometimes we like it a little bit more punchier, a little bit more colorful. We like to change the colors a little bit. We want to have it sharper, crisper, brighter, and so on. And we do that in some editing softwares on our phones. And that is the post-processing. After the phone has processed the photo, you're doing now in post your final touches until you like it. Now let's go back in astrophotography, pre-processing the stacking. And then unfortunately, the processing cannot be done automatically, but it's done by us in PixInsight or in some other processing software. And what comes out of it as a result is a picture which has very high quality standards, for example, for AstroBin or for scientific purposes. But is it also what your friends who are not really astrophotographers want to see, to be impressed? Does it have the power to shine through between the cat pictures and memes on Facebook? Does it really pop to be noted on Instagram? Probably not. And that's where the post-processing comes in. It's where we deviate from the picture we will put probably an astro bin and we change it in a way to make it a little bit more attractive. Even with that, we probably deviate a little bit more from reality. We go more into an area where people could say it's a little bit overcooked, but that's okay because let's be just frank. As soon as you post a picture on Facebook, it's anyway a complete mess based on the compression. So you will never see a picture in Facebook which really upholds the quality standards that we would like to have. And so that is from my point of view, post-processing. So sorry for this lengthy monologue. I hope you're still awake. And if you are, then we will come now to the next section, which is how do we do the post-processing? And obviously it can be done with any picture processing software on the market. You do not need a specialized astrophoto software for that. And that might also be a reason that a lot of people actually write that they actually use PixInsight plus Photoshop. And from my point of view, that's exactly what they do in Photoshop. Just give the picture the last kick to make it really pop. Now, out of whatever reason, I was never really a big fan of Photoshop. And so until now, I did the post-processing with the native photo app 
from Apple. But I found recently by accident a software which is just blowing my mind and I would like to introduce it to you today and that is Luminar Neo. Now Luminar Neo is a little bit special because it is extremely AI heavy and the big advantage of it is on one side that just the results are stunning but that it's also very easy to use. And you know coming from pics inside at least when you're tired when you have three hours worked in pics inside getting the best out of your picture that at the end for this little stretch where you have almost no energy anymore that you then have actually a software which is just a breeze to work with that's just something great. The last thing that I want is after Pics Inside to have another software which works differently and which is equally difficult to use than Pics Inside. So let's hop now on my computer and I will show you Luminar Neo in action. So welcome to my computer and welcome to Luminar Neo. So this is how the user interface looks like. You have three sections, catalog where you have all your photos that you want to work with. You have some presets that's not really relevant for our astrophotography and edit. There you do all the edits. We are now here in the catalog. So I have prepared a few pictures where I want to show you what's possible. They are already finished from a processing point of view in PixInsight. We have here some additional tools. You can like in Topaz, for example, you can upscale. You can do some HDR merge, some focus stacking. The focus stacking might, for example, be interesting when you have a few moonshots which have different areas which are um, in focus and some which are not. So you could actually create a moon picture where everything is in focus, but I have not tried that yet. What we will come to later on is the panorama stitching for our moon pictures. But let's start with some regular deep space pictures. I have here the Eagle Nebula and Andromeda, so some quite common objects. Let's start with the Eagle Nebula. I mark it and go here to edit. And here is our picture and here is everything we have. And you see that's what I mean compared to Pix Inside, where you have to go and you have a lot of cryptic stuff. Here everything's nicely organized. And there's also everything we need in here. So there's no other area. So that makes it really easy. So the first thing, be it for astrophotos or for regular photos, is enhance. That's quite a do it all. It's like just an improvement slider in principle. But obviously, while it works really, really great with regular photos, with astrophotos, we have to be careful. It can have some effects which we do not want. So we just try it out now. I'll take it up now here. And you can always go here on the eye and compare so it gets brighter but also more colorful so we could say we leave that for a moment. The cool part is any process you use now you will find after that in edits and you can later on go on and still adjust it and see it in the context of everything else that you've chosen. So we can close that down for a moment. The next thing we want to try is super sharp. So that's a sharpening tool and we can try it with a middle one, universal. Okay, it's finished. And when we compare it now, the difference is striking. It's like I put my glasses on and it does it actually nicely. It doesn't really blow up the stars, but it looks so much uh, sharper. So that's really an amazing feature here, the super sharp. The next thing which goes in the same direction or more into the contrast actually is structure, also an AI tool. And we have to be very careful here that we do not overcook it. But if we give it a little bit of notch, just again, it pops a little bit more. I do not feel that it does any damage, but it just, it's subtle, but it looks nicer. And we can also, by the way, at any time go down here to the eye and then we see how everything works together. So that's where we started. That's where we are now. The redder look much more fresh. It's much sharper. The nebula pops much more out. It's really a big difference. We can also zoom in here. And 
I don't think I have to say much, but that's like night and day. Amazing. Really amazing what it does. Again, as always, we have to be careful not to overdo it, but there's another feature which we can use on top or instead, and that's details. And you can actually increase here the details of the small details, the medium and the large. And we might look at that also right here. If we now go with the small up, it gets it even sharper. And I think especially here, you would absolutely overcook it. So we have to be really careful here. But if I look at it now before and after, it looks even better. Really amazing. There's this landscape where you have a dehaze function. We misuse here stuff which is not really made for astrophotography, but who cares? Let's, <coughs> let's pump that thing up. You see that? It just takes this, this too bright part of the background away again. So we have now an equal brightness as at the start, but this, for example, absolutely pops. So and that's for me now the, the final picture. Really huge difference. Again, obviously we can discuss now, does this look good to you? Is it overcooked? Is it not accurate anymore? But I do not imply here that this should be done for any purpose. I think I wouldn't post it like that in Astrobin, but I definitely would post it on that on Facebook. By the way, that's now the last thing which you also can do. We can simply go here on export, disk, and now you can choose here the format and you can also resize it. And for Facebook, the long edge should be around 1200 pixels. That's best. So then you click save and you have the picture for posting on social media. This is now obviously saved. We can at any time go in here and reverse changes, modify, add stuff, no problem at all. Just as a second deep sky example, let's take here Andromeda, which I just a few days ago processed. Let's go to edit. And also here we can start with enhance. If you look especially here in the outer areas, it looks um, much nicer. There's areas of the fainter nebulosity of Andromeda, which I probably did not um, stretch enough, which are now nicely visible. Also here we can go to super sharp. Now next to go here on details. And when I now actually in small details and medium details increase it, it really helps the picture, especially here in these areas, um, to bring the structure in the galaxy. The same way when we talk about structure, also the structure, if I increase that a little bit, that just helps a lot actually to bring out the structure in the galaxy. Now, when we look now, when we compare the before and after, the galaxy looks a million times better, but the whole picture looks now a little bit bright. And here we really have also the standard features that you would also find in any other program. The exposure, we can just get a little bit down with it. Also the highlights, we might actually reduce a little bit. Go to the blacks and whites. And now actually without eliminating these freshly worn details again, we have it now on a decent level again. When I look now at the before and after, it just looks much nicer. And I think again, this shows nicely the difference. You could argue that here with the before, the dust is much more visible as dust. It has this airy, this, this foggy feeling, which we want to really depict it in a realistic way. While what we have reached now, we kind of lost this feeling of dust, but we brought out the structures much, much more pronounced. And I would argue that for Facebook, therefore people 
which are not so into astrophotography that would be much more valued and this this kind of dust would be rather perceived as a as an imperfection you could call like with anything what we communicate we have to know who our audience is and prepare what we communicate to them so last but not least before we close this down i want to show you how we can actually just stitch them all together and it's not optimal what i will show you because actually i didn't even have this in mind when I shot this moon. I just played around with auto stacker and so on. You might have seen my moon tutorial. I got to these pictures and I misuse them now, but I will do that in a better way later on. But I just take now these picture and put them here in the panorama stitching. And I click start. And immediately that's what it gets out of it. So it does its best to actually move it together to form a moon. And if I say continue, it tells me where it actually has everything. So that's the cropping proposal. And I say crop. And here I have now my moon picture. I can say save. I move this over now to edit. And this is now without blur exterminator. So here, for example, super sharp, high, so when we zoom in here, before, after, big improvement. We can obviously go here, convert black and white. Looks already much more realistic. We can also with these levers actually influence the black and white picture. Let's zoom out for that for a moment and see what looks nice. Good. If we zoom in here again, let me show you here also the structure. I mean, we can overdo it, but you see the effect. If I only put it up to 10, big difference. And again, the details, huge difference again. So when we look from the start to now, looks way better. That doesn't mean that Blur Exterminator wouldn't do a better job. I would definitely run this through PixInsight, through the Blur Exterminator, and do then the rest here. But Actually, looking at the moon now, quite cool for five minutes or less, which we invested now. So far about astrophotography. So I think Luminar Neo is a great tool for this post-processing. Would I buy it only for that? Probably not. For that, it's too expensive and we can reach almost similar um, results with obviously more effort with other tools. Just give me one minute to actually show you at a regular picture because we all also do regular photos. We're not just doing astrophotos. Some more, some less, but we're living here on Earth. Let's have a look at the real picture. This is a picture I just took last weekend at a star party in the Swiss Alps. And while it's nice, it's in the evening shot when the just the mountains were actually lit it still looks kind of pale so i took about five minutes to work on it with luminar neo and let's move now the curtain over and that's how it looks now so if we go before after huge difference again we get into discussions is it still a real picture when we exchanged <laughs> the clouds, which we actually did here. And this is a function which takes about five seconds. It's quite cool. I can, can show you that. It's probably the, the craziest function that, that this software has. I can simply go in here, likes clouds better. I just click it and here we are. Or if I rather want to have a sky which fits actually to this mood, Yes, we get here into fiction, but it's just kind of, it's kind of a neat feature, I would say. And by the way, Luminar Neo has just announced that they will now also include generative AI rather soon, within the next two or three months, which means you have about the same capability as you have now with Photoshop. So you can really add stuff to it 
which I think is really cool. You can actually add to the picture on all the sites. So, so this is actually coming and I'm really looking forward to that, but more in the sense of regular photography and less for astrophotography. Okay, and that's it. I don't know if you are as excited as I am, but if you are, and if you want to give Luminar Neo a chance, the link is actually in the description below. And if you use the code view into space, then you get a 10% rebate. And with that, see you next time and clear skies.